Greetings, Ebenezer family, and to all who are watching these daily devotions. Thanks for joining us. My name is Nikita, and today we'll be looking at Psalm 96. A brief outline of the psalm, it begins with a call to worship, to praise, to sing to the Lord, and then it describes who the Lord is. Who exactly are we being called to worship? He is glorious and mighty and worthy. Thirdly, it's a call to all the nations to recognize, to ascribe, to identify who the Lord is. A call to all the nations to realize that he is holy and glorious. In verse 10 it says, the Lord reigns. Finally, it's a call to see and hear the Lord who is present on this world. He is all around us. He is revealed to us in nature. Uh, we can look at the sky or at the trees even in the air we breathe, he is here with us now. He is omnipresent. It's kind of interesting how this God-breathed scripture speaks to us in different ways at different times. I've heard the analogy, it's like different faces of a diamond. They glint as you turn or as you look from a different place. A few years ago, Psalm 96 was a comfort and a guide to me. I was at a swim meet and I was struggling with pressure and the fear of performing well. Uh, but in verses four and five, it says, the Lord is great and to be feared above all other gods or idols. After all, he is the creator who made the heavens and the earth. But preparing for this talk, something different stood out to me and it was really, it was cool how this Psalm 96, it was written before Jesus came to earth but it stands out as how God's eternal message of salvation has been for everyone always. His eternal presence and salvation comes out in verse two and three. It says, proclaim his, uh, proclaim his salvation, declare his glory to all nations. We were chosen from before the foundation of the world, before God created man, before man fell into sin before this evil invaded our hearts. We were chosen and God had the plan of redemption and salvation and glorious freedom from death and decay. The psalm is not only for Israel. Um, perhaps King David wrote it. It's, there's some allusions to First Chronicles chapter 16. Uh, which would have been for Israel and the temple. But this psalm is for all nations, for all families. In verse 7 and 9, it says, all families, all nations, cultures, and languages. We are called to see and to know and to worship the Lord. He is mighty, but he is not condemning. He is loving, and he invites us to him. I'm encouraged how the pressure is not on us to convert people or to change their minds but it is God who is here with us now. And he is evidenced in many ways, including nature, as it states in the Psalm. Uh, the Psalm ends with judgment coming in verse 13. It says, rejoice before the Lord for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. It's interesting to note how judgment is at the end, after the grace and the hope and the salvation and the invitation and it's, Interesting to note that judgment is not from us, but is from the righteous and holy God. Some of you are probably saying, obviously, <laughs> but that's a lesson that I uh, need to learn many times in day-to-day -day life, and I'm ashamed to say that. The psalm has words like proclaim and declare, but our declaration should be God's glory and the salvation he offers, not condemnation or judgment. And since this psalm was written, hundreds of years after it was written, Jesus Christ has come to earth, the Son of God has come, lived among us, taught, taught us his gospels. Uh, he died on the cross for our sins. He carried the whole, like all of our sins, he paid for them as he shed his blood on the cross but he is the son of God and death could not hold him. He rose to life and he redeemed us. We now have a more detailed picture of God's plan and a more tangible hope with more descriptions in the New Testament. And if you'd like to read more, I recommend Romans 8, 
in verse 1 it says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And verse 21 says, Creation will be liberated from its, from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Which is a pretty awesome message. I hope you are encouraged today. Thanks for joining us. As we hope in the Lord, we will gain our strength. We will run for miles. We will stand up straight. We will not grow weary. We will not grow faint. On the wings of an eagle, we will rise. And as we Of an eagle